in some print on a main slide. Ron Payne, let me put a word of prayer. Father God, thank you for this day, the day that you blessed us with. Thank you for this man and the life that he lived, the impact he made on us. Bless this time, Father, comfort us in this moment. God, may we, as we look into his life, see your imprint on his life and be impacted by you today. In Christ's name, amen. For anyone who may not know, I am Andrea, his favorite daughter. Um, for many years now, my daddy has asked me to sing at his funeral. And I always told him no. There was no way I could do that. And I yelled at him for talking about his funeral. Um, but I know it's the one thing he always wanted. And I know I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So, God willing, I'm going to sing a couple of Daddy's favorites. And I invite you to worship with me as he's worshiping now face to face. How can I say thanks for the things you have done for me things so undeserved yet you gave to prove your love for me voices of a million angels could not express my gratitude all that I am and ever hope to be, I owe it all, all to you. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God. For the things he has done with his blood, he has saved me with his power, he has raised me to God. For the things he has done, just let me live my life. Let me pleasing, Lord, to thee. And if I should gain any praise, let it go to count. With his blood, he has raised me. With his power, he has raised me. To God be the glory for the things he has done. I dreamed of a city called glory so bright and so fair when I entered the gates I cried holy the angels all met me there 
They carried me from mansion to mansion. And oh, the sights I saw. But I said, I want to see Jesus, the one who died for all. Then I bowed on my knees and cried, Holy, 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 I clapped my hands and sang glory, glory to the Son of God as I entered. The gates of that city, my loved ones all knew me well. They took me down the streets of heaven. The scenes are too many to tell. Huh? Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac, Mark, and Timothy. But I said, no, I want to see Jesus, for he's the one who died for me. Then I bowed on my knees and cried holy 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 i clapped my hands and sang glory glory to the Son of God. Ron Chambers clapped his hands and said, glory. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Glory to his Savior and Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for my love. Stand behind here. All right. Coach. Dad. Ron, Ronnie. Coach Chambers. Born January 9th, 1946, Maryville, Tennessee. Maurice and Marion Chambers. Graduate of Everett High School. Proudly served his country as an honorable sergeant E5 in the United States Army, leading a mortar team and was a medal veteran of the Vietnam War. Coach Ron Chambers moved to Cookville, where he attended Tennessee Tech University and earned both bachelor's and master's degrees, as well as an EDS. Dad spent over 40 years in the Putnam County school system as a beloved teacher, administrator, mentor, FCA leader, football coach, friend. He was a member of the First Baptist Church in Cookville for 36 years and Westview Baptist Church many years before that. 
Throughout our community, Coach Chambers was known as a true gentleman, difference maker in his kingdom. Coach Chambers will be remembered as a true Christian, a man of faith, class act, and a man who loved Jesus, people, and a sea football. Described by loved ones as a giant of a man, his gentle spirit and full of personality, life made all who know him feel loved. Among his proudest accomplishments were his children and grandchildren to call him Papa, and living in true testament to his Christian faith. Coach Chambers believed in the power of prayer and his smile and positive outlook on life healed those who needed it most. Known by many as a golf enthusiast and a connoisseur of the Waffle House ministry, Coach Chambers also loved playing the drums and was a member of the neighborhood band Times a Tickin', along with Mike Powell guitar, Larry Maddox bass, Jeff Dicey the keyboard, and Larry Burks on the guitar. Routinely dressed in orange and white, Coach Chambers often shouted, Go Vols. Coach Chambers could leave us with one last smile. He'd say, Glory. Great day to get better.
I'm Josh. Brother Caleb. John and Brian. I just want to start out by saying thank you to you all uh, for the outpouring of love from this community. What a what a Ron, Ron Chambers ministry this is here. I certainly want you all to carry that spirit forward. I just wanted to share a few words and my brothers did as well. But Ron was just such a joyous man. Um, an exuberant, radiant joy that no matter how bad things were, how good things were, how many games UT lost, didn't matter. Um, it was a joy that was not of man, um, but of the Holy Spirit. And I know you all see it, and uh, I even got a closer look at it. I got to see it every day for a number of years. Um, but it didn't change. It didn't matter if it was Ron or Dad or Pat Paul, coach, teacher. Um, he was the same man. And we all we all had Ron sayings. Um, we could start now. We could list them for hours and hours. But you know, we're gonna want to get home for dinner here soon. Um, but I, I wanted to share a couple that uh, I heard in the early mornings in the home. A couple that that meant a lot to me. And I think just now I'm starting to figure out what they really meant. Um, every morning he would say, "Yep, yeah, today I just got a little bit better looking today." Um, it didn't finally true. That's right, John. Um, so, so I know most of you, if you were here long enough, waiting that long line, you saw his shirtless running picture. Uh, so I'll let you all be the judge if that was true or not. Uh, but in the eyes of our creator, he, he was getting better looking every day. Um, and that wasn't physically, but the spiritual growth um, and how he fed into us as children and a family and obviously our community as well um, is very apparent. Also, if you saw him out in town or you saw him at home, he would say, how, you would ask, how are you? Just a normal greeting. You know, that's what everybody says. And you can say good, whether you're good or not or whatever. Um, but he would often say, uh, if I was doing any better, I'd be in glory. Um, and it's true. Uh, he didn't say it to be funny. He he didn't say it to be humorous, but he said it because he believed it, uh, because he lived it, um, and he's he's doing better now. But I'm just glad to be here to celebrate his life, rejoice with you all, rejoice in his salvation in heaven. Um, I wanted to read a, a, a verse out of First Peter that I just think expresses the joy that filled him. Though you have not seen him, you love him, though you do not see him now, you believe in him. And you rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, attaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. So thankful for Ron, for a dad in my life, and just speaking to me. Um, so glad you could all be a part of this journey. Thank you all. <laughs> Uh, to start off, I just want to thank everyone. Um, our family really appreciates it. And um, for all my education friends and family out there, I definitely want to have to thank uh, Monterey Mountain for this snow day. Snow day. I love snow days. Yeah, absolutely. So on every snow day, Ron would say, well, boys, get your... Get your orange golf balls out. We'll go to play. All right. Uh, to start off, my name is Caleb Reese. If you don't know me, uh, Ron was my stepfather uh, since I was around 10 years old. And when I married my lovely mother, Jana, uh, I learned many things from Ron. But what I cherish the most is how to enjoy life. He loved God. He loved life. Football, balls, golf, his country, but most importantly, he loved his family. When I play golf with Ron, and I would hit a bad shot, lots of bad shots, okay, he would always say, ah, it's just a game. And every time he messed up, he'd say, ah, I love this game. But just like in golf, you can't focus 
on the terrible shots that you hit. That is in the past. Or you'll just keep hitting the bad shot. Huh. If it's in the past and it doesn't do you any good, you have to let it go. You have to focus on the here and now in the present moment. Because if you take care of the present moment, you will have a better future. I love to doubt looking on. He always saw the best in everyone. I'm so, so, so grateful for the time we had with him because I believe the most important thing you can give someone is time. I'm definitely a better person in life because my father. So just enjoy, enjoy the little things. Having got a great man, but for now on earth, his legacy lives on. He touched so many lives and I know he impacted mine. I will always be grateful and thank you guys. I love you. Uh, now it's time for crowd participation. Want everybody stand up? Please. Put both hands up in the air. Count of three, we'll shout glory. One, two, three, glory. Nice. All right, see, please. Thank you. All right, if you played football for dad, stand up. Love you, Neville. Love you, Neville. Love you, Neville. We saw you in the county and said you were my favorite. <laughs> That's a trick. You ever had that as a teacher or a Sunday school teacher? Please stand up. Once again, if you ever saw you in town, pretty sure he said you were my favorite. Uh, you see, I said the one got out of the In the coming days and months and years, here's one of those. Uh, People with the internet, internet challenges. Y'all do that little thing for you. You're out of town. Random places like Walmart or on the green behind Anna's house. I want y'all to stick your hands up here and shout glory wherever you are. You can videotape it and put it on the, the black box list somewhere. Okay? Uh, try not to smile when you do it. On behalf of the Chambers, the Reese's, the Malone's, and the Hamtree family, we thank you for all the kind words and support the last few days and the last 50 plus years that Ron's lived in Kubel. I trust that Kubel will wrap, their, wrap Jenna in their arms and love her in the coming days and months and years. Uh, Jenna told Brian and me to keep it to three or four minutes and keep it traditional. We may go we may go rogue a little bit, okay? I don't think the Malone side or the Reese side ever quite understood the the chamber side of the family. They try to stay out of the fray. Uh, they're all more on the serious side, or maybe just mature side. But the chamber's love language involves a multitude of sarcastic remarks about any topic, especially each other. Our roast would inevitably end up with telling dad stories from when we were growing up. He'd always laugh his big laugh till he cried, and as he was wiping away tears, he would say, that's not true, I didn't do that. And we would all reply, yes, you did. And then he would just keep laughing. Okay, so for, God, I'm, I'm Brian, I'm the youngest by five minutes until Josh and Caleb came along, so he, he always referred to me as his baby boy, and uh, I'm known in the school system as Coach Chambers, but I'm not the Coach Chambers. That was Dad. Uh, you all know that. Uh, Dad would often refer to me as the R-rated version of himself. Um, and and for those of you in the room that know, you know. Um, uh, I took my oldest boy Gray down my buddy's uh, Ray his creek, and I was trying to write, figure out what, what I was going to say. say. And uh, one, one thing, thing I, I, I first thing I wrote down is Dad loved the uh, he loved a good joke, but he really just loved the laugh. I think one of the major reasons he lived as long as he did, laughter is great medicine. I remember being very young going over to Coach Noel Cherry's house. Oh, uh, we go over there and the whole crew would be there. Be Coach Cherry, Carl Finch, David Fox, Bobby Winningham, Jeff Palmer, Bill Tickenbottle, Earl Johnson, Terry Randall, Benji Hill, just to name a few. 
uh, the teachers and coaches we get together all the time, this eat fellowship at the time. And me and Bo and Bo, man, we still talk about just sitting back and watching them just laugh and tell the stories. And we would just love that. And I mean, Coach Cherry putting this mix up of all these Inspector Clouseau mix up from the Pink Panther, they would laugh till they cried. And they sit there and they talk about coaching and teaching and jogging and everything. But one story in particular that I remember that always killed me was they were riding with it was it was C.J. Allen, the principal at the junior high. I don't know what y'all had in him. He was, he was driving. Dad was in the middle, and Coach Fox was in the passenger side. It was a single cab farm truck. And all of y'all that went to the old junior high, there was that roundabout right in front where students waited to get picked up. Dad said they were pulling in here one day after school, and uh, right before they pulled that line, there's still students there. Coach Fox leaned down to where no one could see him and pressed Dad all the way up against C.J. It looked like he was like riding in his lap. So dad couldn't stop laughing. He was trying to imagine what those junior high kids were thinking. Like, there's Coach Chambers, and there's Mr. Allen, and why is he riding on his lap? Uh, so uh, <laughs> that bunch loved to laugh. I mean, I see that whole row of them right back there. Right? Coach Cherry up here, and my son a lot of his golfing buddy. Um, they love the young men they coach. They love the young men and women they taught. And I'm sure that many of y'all in this room have a personal story, not about dad, but many of those guys are just me. Now, so I guess if Brian's the R-rated version, I, I must be the PG-13 version. Um, Dad's a big picture guy. He never worried about the details in life, as it was often frustrating to the rest of us sometimes. Uh, he focused on loving God, loving others, and always having fun doing both. Uh, the Bible verse that best represents Dad for me is the one you have in your program out there, 1 Timothy 4.8. Bodily exercise profits little, but godliness profits unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. Uh, in summary, Dad loved sports. Dad loved Jesus. Dad wasn't a world-class runner, but he did it so he could enjoy his RC colas and his orange peanut butter and crackers, but mostly so he could hang out with Carl Fincher and David Fox and those others we mentioned earlier. He's a good racquetball player, especially if you asked him. Once again, he mostly played so he could eat what he wanted and hang out with David Ripito and Mark Burnett and David Sadler and many others. Uh, being a head football coach for many is about prestige and fame. Uh, for Dad, it was all about his coaching buddies and all the kids he got to be around and love on. In his later years, his exercise was playing golf. Um, I'm not sure how good he was, but he loved saying, you know what that was, boys? That was a good shot. But this time in life, he had switched from RC Cola to Diet Coke to watch his diet. Uh, but he still ate his orange, peanut butter, and crackers. Once again, the main reason he played was or the fellowship of the guys, and I had to get Jenna to help me with these guys. Uh, Mike Neal, Herschel Judd, Larry Maddox, Jerry Absom, Shane Allen, Lonnie Donaldson, Steve Hurts, other, countless others. I couldn't list them all. I guess food was also a constant. Uh, when we were little, Mom referred to him as Round Ron. I don't think he went to Waffle House for the food. He ordered his, his two eggs, sunny side up, and hold your grits in your left hand. I think he just loved putting a quarter in the jukebox and playing Rocky Top, or knowing all the truckers that were in there, and fellowshipping with the workers and whoever else had wanted in. So here's my second challenge. Anytime you go to the Waffle House, be sure you put in a quarter and play Rocky Top for everybody. The, uh, his Waffle House, my Waffle House story. <laughs> I called dad up one day and, you know, asked him if he's still going to Waffle House because I went with him a couple of times and every time he walked in, hey coach, 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 hey coach, coach, he put him rock top, whatever. He said, well, yeah, I'm still going there. I said, well, how's it been going? He said, well, he said, uh, I kind of told a joke to my buddies that I don't think went over too well. I was like, so of course I wanted to know what that joke was. And uh, here it is. And he said, <laughs> He said, a man goes to the doctor for a checkup, and the doctor comes in the room and says, Sir, I got the bad news, and I got the really bad news. The man says, Well, gee, Doc, I guess I'll have the bad news first. The doctor said, Sir, I'm sorry, but you have cancer. The man said, Doc, I hate to ask. What's the really bad news? And the doctor said, Well, you also have Alzheimer's. 
The man sat there for the doc for a minute and then looked up the doctor after a long pause and said, well, doc, at least I don't have cancer. <laughs> so I, I'm laughing at this point, and he said, it turned out that I was funny. He said, but he was cool. We laughed, and everything was fine. They remain buddies still this day, and we were meeting with Brad Horner over at the, the funeral home the other day, and John remembered driving by with Dad by the funeral home, and Brad and some of the other funeral workers were out, and they had the, the hood of the hearse lifted up, and they were looking under the hood, and Dad drove by real slow, rolled down, went on stop, and yelled out and go, hey, fellas, what's the matter? Did your car die? <laughs> Dad always made you feel special. When he would call, he would start laughing before he even said hello. You're always his favorite son-in-law, daughter-in-law, mother-in-law, whoever was there. You were his favorite daughter-in-law. Um, one of the guys that came up here just a minute ago said that he always called me his favorite neighbor. Uh, so uh, you were always his favorite fill-in-the-blank. Uh, loving folks was a, a big part of his big picture philosophy. I think uh, uh, Vietnam is what cemented this worldview. To him, everything after Vietnam was small stuff. He often said that after Vietnam, every day was like Christmas. Whenever I'd try to press him on the details about life and theology and politics, he would just tell me that it all worked out eventually, or his most famous line was, let me know how that works out. I know that today dad would want us to laugh and tell positive stories about him. He never even cared when we ganged up on him and told dad stories as long as we were all together and we were laughing. Uh, there, was, there was no ego in the man. I would say dad was a very confident man, but there was no, not confident to the point where he ever thought he was better than anybody. Uh, he loved everyone. Uh, dad would often say, I love waking up in the morning, waiting on someone to pass by so he could say, because I get better looking every day. Uh, mom used to always joke because every time dad would stop at a mirror and flex with her shirt on or off, she'd look at us and say, you know, he thinks he looks like Magnum P.I. He looks like Higgins. Uh -huh. So he, uh, he was a big SCA leader with all those coaches, and we'd always go to Black Mountain, North Carolina, and a lot of you guys in the room have been there and have a lot of fond memories. And he got to speak at banquets, and one time he got the – the honor to introduce uh, Bobby Bowden of the Florida State Seminary. And he, he would always make fun of himself. Jana was there with him, and he wasn't scared to laugh at himself, like we always said. And he started off by saying, you know, ladies and gentlemen, me and Coach Bowden have a lot in common. We both coach football for 30-plus years. We both make over $30,000 a year. His wife loves how he coaches, and my wife loves how he coaches. And I know. Uh, Dad was a head coach at Cookville Junior High School for many years. A lot of you all played for him, but he also got the opportunity to coach Cookville High School. In 1994, we were playing number one ranked in the state Riverdale. These guys were also ranked nationally. Uh, I know some of y'all in here, I think I saw Bird and Frank and Vic and PJ. Some of y'all are in SMU seniors that were on that team. Um, they, of course, went on to win the state championship. They had 11 guys willing to play D1. Some going to play the NFL, and we weren't very good. Right? We ended up going one and nine that year. Halftime rolls around, and the score is somewhere around 42 to nothing at this point. Yeah, all the guys I played with remember Coach Lamb, Coach Sam Brooks, Coach Jojo Matheny being young, the full piss and vinegar guys. I'm trying to rally something, let us know, hey, we could still win this thing. We just get out there and correct this and that. There's a whole lot of football left. The score is 0 0. Here we go. Let's go. When they got finished doing their thing as young offensive, defensive coaches should do, pumping us all up to get back up there and win this thing. Dad, who at this point had been coaching for many, many years, at this point sadly knew what the outcome was going to be. He walked up, and the only thing he said to us all was, men, you've got to go back up. I tell that story to tell my last one about football. Um, a good friend, Michael Bowen, called me up one day. He found this newspaper article from that season. He was like, why did I keep it? I mean, why did I keep that? And then he realized 
why he did. We was from that one and nine season. We were fixing to play Gallatin. We hadn't won a game at this point. They asked Dad about the upcoming game against Gallatin. Dad said, and I quote, they are a very good football team. And yes, this is going to be a yet another homecoming game that this team will be playing. He said, this team has seen more Queen's crown than a third world country. And he was quoted in the newspaper. It's all the time. Uh, last thing. Uh, Dad loved life. Several mentioned Bible verses describing Dad today. And the only one that come to mind to me was Proverbs 22 1. It said, A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches. And I think we all would agree he had nothing but a good name. He was a phenomenal name. Um, he had many friends that came from many different walks of life, both male, female, all ages, people with different beliefs, different political views, etc. Dad simply loved. He lived life. He was always supportive of me and when I chose it. I remember one time I met Dad in the driveway to let him know that I was thinking of taking a semester off from college and I was going to move out to Oregon with some friends. I was nervous thinking that he would say no or why are you going to do that or whatever. He said, yeah, that's fine, son. You don't have to go to college, but you are going to work. But absolutely, okay. I was completely re relieved. We talked for a few more minutes. He said, yes, yeah, son, I remember that time I took off half from college. I said, really, where'd you go? Where'd you go? He goes, Vietnam. So if there's one thing I could pass on to my son uh, from the legacy left behind from their pack on, it would have to be Greg Cohen. I love you. Live your life. Work hard. Be honest. Love people. Make sure to laugh. I'm always here for you. And always, always make sure to tell your mama that you love and appreciate. I love you. Uh, Dad said his idea of heaven was like when he got off the plane after he left Vietnam. And he opened the door and all his family was there waiting for him. Mom and his daddy, wife. Dad got to experience that on Thursday for real. Uh, when we were looking through his papers this week, Emily Chambers uh, noticed something in his discharge papers. Uh, in the middle of his tour in Vietnam, he got to come home for two weeks uh, to, to Hawaii. He had to got to go to earthly paradise for two weeks and spend two weeks with his wife. And the date that he left Vietnam, December 30th, to go home and see his bride. Uh, and he, he got to do that again on Thursday uh, to real paradise. Um, we can't talk about dad without talking about Jesus. Uh, he would tell us that when this day comes for all of us, we are lying here. The only way this has a happy ending is in Jesus. Jesus said we can live with ever, forever with him. That's what dad taught us. I can't prove it. But dad's life is evidence enough for me. When my favorite theologian, Phil Robinson, Duck Dynasty guy, says, love God and love others. What's the downside? You got a better story? I'd love to hear it. Just think about it. We love you, dad. and love you, Jana. afternoon everyone first give an honor to god it's good to be here you know the, the pastor i noticed with the guys up here particularly the pastor must be a little shorter than us that mike don't come out he has to have sound because i was i was looking at the beginning and i thought we're gonna all be like this <laughs> he's not vertically challenged to he's okay Jenna, I got a piece of orange. Somebody eating an orange. And I did wash my hands and all that stuff so I'd have some orange. I've got Ron and I argued about orange all the time. I won't tell you the color I go with, but orange was not particularly it. Only in his presence that I have to be orange. There's something he would say to me. I look around in here today, I kind of get some of it, but when we play racquetball, and Dave Sadler's here, who's another one that was just crazy about Ron. 
And we could say all kinds of things off the cuff. I mean, he was good. Y'all were pretty good. Y'all had most of y'all wrote down, but he was, I mean, he was sharp. He could click things off. And we'd be playing some days. He'd walk over to me and say, well, I'm glad you bring a little color to this situation. <laughs> and like most coaches and players and athletes, you know, race was never an issue for us as athletes. In fact, the only color we ever talked about was the color of the other team and how much we hated them. So he was, he was, it was not a racist statement by any means, but I could see him today standing over there and saying, why don't you do a little color commentary while you're up there? And for him, of course, I would. Uh, something you may not know, we're also Blunt County boys. Ron and I were the Blunt County boys. Now, there may be others of you in here that are from Blunt County, uh, but we were the Blunt County boys. I went to Alcoa, and, and uh, he went to Everett, which most people don't know of <laughs> anymore. And there's Alcoa and there's Maryville, and that's about it anymore. But but he went to Everett, and, and we were actually in the same district. And, and he would always tell me, I watched you play when I was little. And I'd say, that math's not adding up. Uh, and at the time, I was, I was actually being, I, I don't know what you'd call it, because I'd say, well, you're a coach. So, so maybe that math don't add right for you. But <laughs> you can add 11, but that's right. <laughs> but that's it. But he would say that all the time. Boy, when, when I was little, I watched you play. And I was going to look a little older. He must have really thought he looked really good. Because I've heard y'all say things. He thought he was Superman, I'm telling you. And in his own mind, he was. He was a legend in his own mind sometimes. To the family this afternoon, I, I just simply say to y'all, you know, hold on to God's unchanging hand. You know, he'll be a bottle for your tears and a bosom for your groans. And you know you got a good father, and you know where he's at. And while he can't come to us, and why would he choose to, we can go to him. Oh, man, you can go to him. So keep your hand in God's hand so that you can go to him. And remember also, too, that there's no hurt that heaven can't heal. There's no hurt that heaven can't heal. As time goes on, remember those good things. I, I remember the things you guys were telling. I'll remember that stuff forever. But some of it brought back memories. One in particular, my son Ron would see us even the last, probably in November sometimes. We were, would see him and my wife's here, and he'd see us in Kroger there somewhere, and he'd say, boy, if that boy said, y'all, if I could have got him to keep playing football, y'all be making money right now. He'd be in the NFL. <laughs> So I pulled him aside one time and I said, you know, my son mostly played basketball. I played a little bit of everything when I was growing up over in Blunt County. But anyway, I said, he's always played basketball, coach. He said, yeah, but I could teach him to play football. So one time, I guess it was middle school, Mario was playing and Ron had him playing defense and he's like a, a defensive back or something. And this team ran a reverse. I don't know who it was, but they ran a reverse. And my son, and I heard Ron, he was telling them, he had told them, they'd been telling them, you know, watch for this, you know, they're going to run a reversal. So you got to stay in your spot. Don't fall for it. Don't. Boy, they ran that reverse, and that kid came around this way. My son was still right there, and that kid was going down that side. <laughs> and I said, that's why he's not playing football. He's not going to embarrass the Burnets any more than he has to. And so we'll find something he can do. So we kept him in basketball. But he did. I'll never forget that. I said, I said, Ron, that's why right there. I said, he's standing right there frozen. And they were going that way. <laughs> he was still watching by the time the kid scored about 50 miles down the field. He was still watching. <laughs> I said, that's why we're not doing football. Waffle House. We talked about the Waffle House. Reverend Dirksen and I from over at Trinity Baptist, we would go to Waffle House a lot. So Ron and we were talking about it. And we called it the greasy spoon. So I knew if he ever said, you won't go to the Greasy Spoon, I knew where we were going. It was to the Waffle House. He talked about the band every now and again, and I figured out watching Wipeout, he really did have some rhythm. When I watched him play racquetball, we didn't think he had any rhythm, but but he really did have some rhythm. And he, and as it was mentioned earlier, you know, Mike Powell and, and Larry Maddox and Jeff Dicey, Larry Burroughs, is that the Larry Burks? My back Larry Burks? Good Yeah, okay, that Larry Burks, okay. I didn't know that. Uh, but I, I started teasing him and calling him Rhythm Ron. And he liked that, calling him Rhythm Ron. 
And so, but he talked about being a drummer. He was a big time drummer and all that stuff. One day we were talking, of course, we kept it mostly to sports, but we were talking about uh, the greatest. I was telling him about doing a sermon on the greatest, and he was talking about it. And he said, yeah, you know, they call Muhammad Ali the greatest. And I said, well, yeah, they call Muhammad Ali the greatest. And we talked about it for a few minutes, and I said, well, who you really consider the greatest? And you know, again, with Ron, you know something else was coming. And I just want to get on to it. He said, well, there's God. And I said, yeah, God, the greatest. And he said, then there's me. <laughs> Not me, him. <laughs> and he said, then there's Muhammad Ali. I said, yeah, okay, we'll take that. But from that, I took something when Ron talking about spiritual matters and religion and church, really loved his church and his church family, his pastor, everybody, his friends that were in church. I, I saw something. I, I saw the gospel in what is called the gospel in miniature. And it made me think of Ron this morning when I was looking at it. It says, God, the greatest being, so loved, the greatest emotion. The world, the greatest number that he gave, the greatest act, his only begotten son, the greatest gift, that whosoever, the greatest invitation, believe it, the greatest simplicity, in him, the greatest person. Should not perish the greatest deliverance, but the greatest difference had the greatest certainty, everlasting life, the greatest possession. Amen. Last but not least, we talk movies. Uh, I'm, I'm a big Clint Eastwood fan. Always have been, always. In fact, I was looking for 1977 uh, Tennessee Tech uh, athletic book basketball program. It said, your favorite actor, and of course, my was Clint Eastwood, 18 year old coming to Tennessee Tech University. And I love the movies. I love, particularly, I like Outlaw Josie Wales. A lot of Clint Eastwood things that movies that you could watch, and if you've watched them, fine. If you haven't, it, it, it may be irrelevant. But in this particular movie, and Ron and I would talk about that stuff, and I, he liked John Wayne and Clint Eastwood and all those kind of guys. We'd get puffed up when we talk about that stuff. And there was a conversation between an Indian chief, Tin Bears. I always laughed at that. I thought, if you name Chief Tin Bears, you must be a bad rascal. <laughs> The Ten Bears and, and Josie Wales, Clint Eastwood. And they dis discussed whether they were going to kill each other or not, whether they were going to fight and die or just what was going to happen. But there was a part of that, and I, I paraphrase somewhat, but they talked about how there were iron, there was iron in their words, that they were, there was iron in their words. But one quote that I attribute to kind of the way Ron and I were, Play racquetball. We talked about our families. We spent time. We did a lot of stuff, a lot of great things together. And if I were looking at him right now, I would say it is good that warriors such as us meet in the struggle of life or death. And at the end of that conversation between Tin Bears and Josie Wales, Ten Bears looks at him and says, we choose life. That's the way I would look at Ron. If I could say something to him right now, I would say, good that we warriors met in the struggle of life or death. And Ron would tell you all to choose life. Choose life. And if you choose life, you're choosing Jesus Christ. Choose life. Have life. Live life. Be the people you're supposed to be. Carry on his legacy. I'll certainly do my part. I learned a lot from that man. I learned a lot about loving people and caring about people, looking after people. 
And it wasn't all about church. It was about people you meet on the street. Amen. Sometimes we sit in our respective churches. I do too. And we think people just don't run in on us. We got to meet them where they are. Ron was really good at meeting people wherever they were. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come and we truly thank you for this day. Touch the pastor of this church, this great institution. Touch this waiting congregation. Father, on this day, touch this family. Touch Jenna, the crown of her head, to the soles of her feet. Give them all a peace that surpasses all understanding. Oh, Father, you're an own time God. You can span the universe. We're a bottle for our tears and a bosom for our groans. Well, thank you for the life of Ron Chamberlain. Thank you for the influence that he had on everyone that he met and spent time with. Father, give us the opportunity to carry on that legacy, compassion and caring, understanding, wisdom, things that we need, Father, to better serve you and to serve others. Draw that family closer than they've ever been. Touch them in a mighty way. Most of all, we thank you for your darling son, Jesus, who lived and died and rose again that we may all have a right to eternal life. And it's in the mighty and blessed name of Jesus and for his sake that we do pray. Amen. There's no way that coach would want this to be a solo. Oh, I heard a thousand stories of big things your life. Her tender whisper of love in the dead of me. That you're pleased and that I'm never alone. Your good goodbye to who you are, who you are. Who you are, and I'm loved by you. To I am, to I am, to I am. Oh, now me, baby, searching for answers far and wide, but I. No, we're all searching for answers, only you provide, cause you know just what we need before we say a word, you're a good, good father, and who you are, who you are, who you are. I'm loved by you. Do I am? Do I am? Do I am? You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. And you are, Lord, you are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. Perfect in all of your ways. You oh, it's love. Oh. Undeniable, I, I, heartlessly, 
Hey, Burnett, I got to ask you something. After hearing his voice uh, speak a minute ago, did he ever tell you you were his favorite pastor? I mean, I just got to know because that's what he told me. Okay, good. <laughs> and y'all know why this pulpit didn't fit y'all, don't you? It wasn't made for you. I am so glad we can come to a funeral and laugh. Amen. I've been to many, I cried and cried, but you know, when you know somebody and you know their love for not only others, but their love for Jesus, it makes all the difference in the world. Another thing I learned from Coach, I always thought FCA, meant Fellowship of Christian Athletes, he told me it was a Fired Coaches Association. Didn't know that till I met Coach. <laughs> I got in my hand right here something I wish every one of you in here could get your hands on. For 15 years or so, I have made it my practice when someone died. If I had a connection with the family, I asked if I could hold their Bible. I wanted to preach their funeral from their Bible. And a Bible tells you so much about somebody a lot of times. Not every time. There's some that they, they never write in their Bible, underline anything, or never put anything in their Bible. And, and I understand that out of reverence. I get it. But there are, this is a working document on me. And I, I can sense a lot from holding somebody else's Bible. But for me personally, I, I write now and I talk to God as he's talking to me. And... Oh boy, you can't turn a page in here that hadn't been underlined, hasn't been written on, hasn't had a note put in it. I'm not just talking about him. I can't preach Ron Chambers into heaven. He's already, he's already lived his life and he's preached his own funeral. And when you look at his Bible, you know he spent time in it. This wasn't just something he check the box on. This was something that meant something. I mean, this was his life. And, and I was just, I never got far, Miss Jana. I never got far into the notes on the front. And, and the kids had this rebound several years ago, I believe, um, because he wore it out. 
But it, it, the, one of the first statements in his Bible he wrote was, some people are all hat and no Texas. Just, y'all y'all put that in your pipe and smoke on it for a little while because it takes a little while to figure out everything, but if you know Ron, that says a lot. He says, we don't have to win every battle, but we do have to win the right battle. And that's for sure. There's a battle that we fight. And we got to win the right one. Life is never lived well accidentally. It's pretty good. Education without application is dangerous. I told Mark earlier, he wrote down a statement that uh, one of the greatest ladies in my life told me, y'all, if you've been in church with me, you probably heard me say it. Um, she told me when I left the first church I pastored in a town of 417 people, I had 30, 30 members in the church when I went there. That was members, not attenders. So it was probably under that, if you can imagine. But uh, Miss Ju- Miss, uh, Miss Georgia London, she gave me some of the greatest words of wisdom. She said, boy, you're going to go places. And when you leave here, you be who you is, because if you is who you ain't, you ain't who you is. Now you have to think about that. Ron obviously thought about it because he wrote it down in the Bible. <laughs> And as I was reading through this Bible, there are so many things that I said or that God inspired me to say that Ron wrote down. I'm like, that is so cool. Witnessing tool, think fire. Family, interest, relationships with God or relationship with God, exploratory questions about the spiritual life. Fire, F-I-R-E. I mean, just so many things. Believe in Christ, belong to Christ, behave like Christ. Salvation, the process of salvation. Justification, that's first, he says. Sanctification, that's now. Glorification, and beside that, he wrote in in Ron Chambers style, glory. (laughs) He drew things in here. He wrote things. You as kids, y'all just need to grab this and all y'all to rotate it around for a month at a time. It's so, so valuable. So much in here, for sure. Life is but a trip from the womb to the tomb, he wrote. I mean, I've heard that before too, but it was it was something he put out in there. I, I want to tell you, I had the privilege of serving as Ron's pastor for almost seven years and doing life with him. And there are many thoughts that come to mind when I think about Ron Chambers, for sure. Uh, the last time I talked with him, I was entering Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia, with my son to go watch the SEC championship. And Ron and I were talking about how Georgia was going to beat Alabama. That didn't happen. For the third time, I rode home with my hat in my hand. But um, I'm a Georgia fan. He's a Tennessee fan. And just for Ron today, I did something I don't think I've done in Tennessee. But I wore balls. Go balls. <laughs> and when you play Rocky Top, I got excited. I guess Tennessee's wearing on me. But um, I, I got to talk to Ron that day, and there were so many times that Ron and I talked. I, I watched him play the drums, and as a pastor of this church, watched him. I sat right over there and watched Ron right over there play drums. And I can say that in all the years I've pastored, I've rarely seen anyone play an instrument and enjoy it deeply. He loved what he was doing. He loved, it was worship for him to play the drums. And he, he was a fine drummer. I loved him. I loved to watch him play. Just it, The smile on his face while he played was just, it was intoxicating. Ron was one of the few people you meet in life that always has something encouraging to say. He encouraged me, encouraged you. He loved life. He loved people. He loved Jesus. He loved the long ride with the, with the top down. He loved to play golf. He, he loved these things. It was things that he, he loved. But he loved his family. He did. He loved Jana. And, and, and the last memory etched in my mind that I have visual, that I have in my mind, was... Right over there by where Mr. Jim Byer is sitting. Ron was inside. Janet was on the end cap. And I was preaching. And I always look at faces of people while I'm preaching because you matter. And I want to connect to people. And as I'm preaching that day, I'm watching Ron and Janet. 
And what I see in that moment is like two teenagers. Ron's sitting there with the biggest smile on his face, red face, white hair, and Janice got, got her arms wrapped around his and laid over on his shoulder. And she's smiling ear to ear. I'm like, that's love right there. That's, that's that embrace. That's that, that love for each other. And I told Miss Janice, I'm going to say that because that's, that's the last picture, visual picture I have of Ron. But that's just one of the many I have. And it was always encouraging, inspiring. He pushed us all for sure. Valuable time. Time is valuable. And every time I got to spend with Ron was valuable time for sure. He lived life to the very fullest. He didn't waste time. He, he lived it to the fullest. And he loved life. How often, though, we hold on so dearly to this life. And, and Ron was one of those, when I talked to him about life, he was talking about the next life, glory, going to glory. That, that's what his sights were set on. Yes, live life the fullest you can here, but recognize this is not the end. You've got eternity before you. And he was living that. He and I shared this love for, and I know there are many to do, but we would take pictures and, and we would look at them. But the pictures of a sunset or a sunrise, and I'd recently posted a sunrise, and, and he had posted a sunset, and Miss Jana sent it to me, and, and Ron and I would talk about that. But the beauty that, that's there, and, and, and it just captures me and inspires me to look at the things that God has created. From, from the sunrise to the sunset, to the snow that blanketed the earth around us yesterday and into this morning. When I walked out this morning to check on the cows, I was I was riding. I said, I told my wife when I got back, I said, every time it snows, because we grew up in Georgia and it didn't snow. If it did, it was an accident. But um, we, we very rarely saw it. So now living here, I become a kid and a photographer every time it snows. So I'm riding, I got a hundred pictures of a black cow in the snow this morning. <laughs> I'm like, look at the stark difference in my life. I'm like, okay, yes, you don't get it. I mean, look at the difference. I mean, and every snowflake that landed was unique. Just like every fingerprint is unique and every person's eye is unique. Everything it is so beautiful. And from that to the, the blooming of a flower, to see the, the blooms on the stage here, how beautiful and intricate they are made. And to look at that, and, and I was, I was when I got the word that Ron had died, I was talking to a friend. I started relating all this to him. I said, you know, we live so much for this life, holding on for this minute, when there's so much more that awaits us. Because the God that created that flower, the God that sent that snow, the God that set that sunrise and that sunset is the same God who's prepared a place in eternity for us. And if he's held out the best for us, I can't wait to see it. And you're right. Y'all are right when he said, Ron stepped into heaven and all was awaiting him. But probably the greatest was not the people. And it was Jesus and it was the reality of eternity that met him. Right there. Face to face he saw. And here's the reality, folks. We face a coffin today. Draped with a beautiful flag. We, we love our country. We love Ron served our country. But there's no greater time than this moment to capture the reality of eternity. And set it in our hearts. Ron lived his life well. And it causes us to pause and ask how we're living this. Because one day, if Jesus tarries and does not return for all of us before we die, we'll all be empty. And someone will have to say something about us. There's a difference between having to say something about somebody, Mark, and getting to say something about somebody. But Brother Ron lived his life, loved his Lord. And as I opened this Bible and flip through and think through some of the things he said, some of the things he wrote, uh, I'm just inspired by him, really. Passage of Scripture I want to share with you. 
From Psalm 20, verse 7 through 8, it says, Some boast in chariots and some of horses, but we boast in the name of the Lord our God. And they will collapse and fall, but we shall rise and stand upright. Ron knew where to put his focus and his faith. Not in horses and chariots, not in things of this world. The one who created this world. And then when you flip over to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, the passage of Scripture says, But as it is written, no eye has seen, nor ear has heard, nor the heart of man convinced or conceived what God has prepared for those who love. God's got something more to be prepared for us. We don't need to put our stock on the things of this world, but the one who created this world. I, I pray that everybody has the journey. And you have the chance. You're drawing breath right now. You have the chance to have the journey. Spend time with the creator of the universe and get to know him. Deeply. And live for him. Completely. God's given us that privilege. He says, all that call upon my name shall find me. All that seek me with all their heart will find me. Ron lived his life looking forward to glory. And that's where he is today. He left nothing on the table in this life, having lived it to the full. Now he is seeing God in his fullness and in eternity. Jana, we love you. Privileged to know you. Do life with you. Go look at the guys. Well, let me just start on the other side. The favorite daughter. He loved you. Greatly he did. Andrea, thank you for singing and this glory bumps come up when you sang this, this evening. I know your dad asked you to do that and that was hard. Blessings. Thank you. We'll pray for you. Days to come. John and Adam and Brian and Caleb and Joshua, we pray for you. you. Know that God loves you. Got a purpose and a plan for your life. And a strong man carried a torch for a long time. You boys carry it now. A lot on your shoulders. But God prepared you. Walk with him. For us, we look at our life and look at his life. And no, I'm not, not called to live Ron's life. I'm called to live my life. But I'm called to live for Jesus, and you are too. He did well. I pray that you will. I pray that you'll find a place of worship, a place where you can invest your life and live your life and love the Lord that created your life. For every one of us that leave here, may we remember him, remember Ron, the stories. We'll look to the God that he looked to. Makes all the difference in the world. Let me pray for you. Father God, thank you so much for loving us. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege to know Ron and his family. My life was touched by him. He always smiled. Always encouraged. Always had a positive outlook. Never saw him have a bad day. I know it's a choice we have to make, God. May we in this room, having known him, seen that in him, known where he drew his strength. It was not from him. It was from you. He drew his strength. Let us model that in our lives. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for grace. God, we've all wrecked it, but you recovered it and redeemed it and called us to yourself. So let us come to you just as we are. Thank you, Lord. We love you and praise you in Christ's name. So, um, Jana said I had three or four minutes for my part, and I, I'm supposed to give the closing remarks and prayer, but I have to address a couple of things first very quickly. 
I think, John, you were the one that mentioned the Waffle House ministry. I was privileged to be a part of that in the later years of that ministry. And I think Ron got a little bit offended. And oh, by the way, Janet, he did eat tofu and oatmeal when, you know. I think Ron got a little bit offended when after about the third or fourth time of meeting him there, I said, Ron, I said, I don't know that I can keep coming here with you. It's too much like going out with the homecoming queen. I mean, you're, he knew everybody, right? So I'm driving in. I get a text from Scott, and he says, uh, Miss Jana says that she expects you to say, and we all know what that word's going to be, just like Ron said it, and be short. So I've been pacing the halls, quietly practicing that word. But before I say it, it's been said so many times. And it's such an appropriate word because it's a huge word with a great meaning. Matter of fact, let me just go ahead and share this with you why, before I just can't stand myself. But you know what? This word, the Greek word is doxa. And it actually is translated into English as doxology. So this word is an all-encompassing the presence of God, the place that he has prepared for us when we go to there. It's the, it's the total package, the total picture, the total presence, the total power in our lives. And that word is glory. Now, I know that wasn't very good, but as I listened to you all, it was it was like, OK, maybe I can do it a little bit. Scott talked about all the things in Ron's Bible. I never asked Ron if he had a life verse, but I assigned him one in my Bible. And Scott, if you're still here, when I go and you look in my Bible, you will turn to Romans chapter five, verses one and two. And that's my assigned verse passage. For Ron Chambers. I've got it right here in my Bible. Ron Chambers. And I'm going to read it to you very briefly. And then I'm going to close with a doxa. I'm going to close with a glory. And it's two verses. But Romans 5, 1 and 2 says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have obtained our introduction by faith into this grace in which we stand. And this was what just really jumped out to me about Ron. It goes on to say, and we exalt in hope of the glory of God. Now, I love that word exalt, and I don't have a really clue what it means, but your translation may say boast. It may say rejoice. But here's what I get out of it. When I read exalt, you know what I think of? I think of oozing out. Because that's what Ron did. When Ron Chambers walked into a room, you know something big and good was going to happen. Now, that doesn't happen because of his good personality, which he had a great personality. He loved people. But none of that measured anything next to the truth of that part of that verse in that song that says, when heaven came down, glory fill my soul. Y'all remember the song? Glory fill my soul. Unless it's on the inside, what oozes out on the outside doesn't matter to a hill of beans. It doesn't matter how nice a person you are. But when Ron walked in, he had a spiritual swagger that you just, it was captivating, it was encouraging, it was motivating, it was exciting. It was wonderful, right? So here's the closing prayer that I'm supposed to lead. And this is our prayer because it's a doxa, it's a glory. And it's found in Jude Verses 24 and 25. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to make you stand in the presence of his glory, blameless with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen.